Hi everyone, this is John, and in this tutorial we're going to walk through setting up Plex in the Docker for Windows environment. And so we had put out a uh, earlier video walking through how to set up um, a tunnel within the Docker for Windows environment and talked a little bit about some of the, the nuances and how Docker for Windows is different than Docker for Linux. The one big um, area of difference is that Docker for Windows runs as a virtual machine, so all of your containers are actually running inside of a virtual machine that uh, Windows is hosting for you. And uh, I think that this is great because it provides like a area of separation and isolation for the servers that you're running from your Windows 10 host. And so uh, in this tutorial, we're going to show a couple of more examples of uh, how we can actually integrate like, you know, your media library might be hosted on a NAS. Um, into the Docker for Windows environment, and then also be able to, you know, make it available, but also restrict some access. And we'll sort of talk through all those different kinds of configuration options. And so if you're unfamiliar with Plex, it's a media server. Um, it's actually extremely popular. It's, um, it's used by a lot of people. And it pretty much allows you to um, host and stream your own media library. So if you have uh, music, uh, videos, podcasts, you can um, you know, store them in a NAS or uh, on, a, on a computer that's got just a lot of storage capacity. And you can, you can run Plex, it's, um, it's for free. <clears throat> and you can host your um, entire media library and access it through a web browser or through your mobile phone. And so if you wanna be able to um, you know, um, expose it and make it available on the internet, um, you know, a lot of users actually use um, Packet Riot and a uh, tunnel to do that. And so we're going to walk through uh, setting up just Plex since we already have a tunnel that we created. And so if you want, you can follow along when, with this tutorial on our website. Um, it's going to be different because this was setting up, um, there are going to be some slight differences because this was setting up uh, Plex um, in Docker for Linux. And so uh, the paths are going to look different and there's going to be a couple of um, sort of nuances that we'll cover that are just different than you know, using Docker for, for Linux. But I think this will provide a pretty good um, example to at least kind of, you know, um, to review as you kind of follow this video. A couple things that I'll highlight here is that our compose file is not gonna be the same. And so, um, you know, I'll post an update to this tutorial um, that actually has the updates to the compose file. Um, th these updates are just gonna be necessary since um, this is Docker for Windows and there are just changes that we have to make. And so let's just um, kind of uh, review our Docker Compose file. So, um, you know, we're going to be creating a series of videos that um, illustrate how to set up um, different servers using Docker for Windows and uh, covering that. And so uh, we already had set up our tunnel in an earlier video. And so now we're going to be setting up Plex. And so um, what I did was I have a block here that I had already worked on. Um, that was based on the compose file in this tutorial. So the one thing that you'll see is that, um, you know, the paths just look different um, between Linux and Windows. So we made some updates there. Um, I also did not specify a network in my um, container here. Um, a network will be created. It's just going to be automatically given a name by Docker for Windows. And so um, its, its name is not really important. Uh, you'll see that <clears throat> the the volumes, some of the volumes actually, you know, have a C colon slash file path. And so I did that for these two directories here, for the Plex config and for Plex transcode. And I have um, this directory, which I created in the previous video um, covering Docker for Windows. And uh, you'll see that um, that there is no Plex directory, but Docker for Windows is going to make that. Um, so what's this this last um, volume over here, right? It's just music and it's being mapped inside the container to slash music and it's being set to read only. Well, this this volume here is actually being created in this block right over here. And so this is a volume that is being created, but it's actually using a, a network mounted share, right? So. Uh, I, I have a NAS um, that's a Synology and it hosts all of my music 
And so what I want to be able to do is use my NAS as a source for my media library um, and then mount that into my Plex container so that I can, um, I can have one location to, to manage and store all of my media. So, um, you know, you might have, um, you know, you might, you might have, um, uh, movies that you that you organize so uh, and podcasts or other kinds of you know media formats so so this is how my setup works your your setup might be different but um, you know it'll probably serve as like a good example so one thing that I did prior is that I actually set up a specific user to access my music share in a read-only state and I created this user just for this demonstration um, but I have here basically the username password right for this for this read-only user and, and, and also a path to um, my NAS and the name of the share which is music um, and so what I have um, so what, what what will happen is that when I run docker compose up it's going to create this volume and it's going to create this container right and so I already created um, a user um, that only has read-only access to this. So right, so 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 this this mount point is read-only, um, and this is actually a mount point that's being created inside the Docker for Windows Virtual Machine. So it's it's not going to be available here in my Windows 10 environment. Environment, although I do have it mounted here just so I can just see that it's available and kind of show it in this uh, in this demo video. Um, but there's actually an extra layer where as we mount this read-only. Um, this read-only network mount into the container. We make that and instruct Docker to also make that read-only. So, so in, in in reality, this is not necessary, but it's just sort of like two two mechanisms to make sure that you know our media can't be written to um, by anything inside of Plex. So, and this is fine because Plex um, only needs read-only access. Um, and so let's just kind of start this up. So right now I have my container. Um, I'm going to switch over into my home server directory, which is um, the root that I had set up in our earlier video. And I'm going to run Docker Compose up. And you'll see that it's creating the volume, and now it's creating Plex. And so um, if you open up the Docker for Windows app, you'll see that I've had this running in the background, and both of these, both of these are running here. So what I'm going to do is I um, the name of my packet write container, I just called it packet write, so this way it's nice and easy for me to type now. And you'll see that uh, it's configured, but there are no rules. And so let's just visit it real quick and make sure that it's running. Okay, and it's available. And so Plex, um, you can kind of see here in this compose file, like Plex has a lot of ports that it uses, but this is the only port that we really need. So in my use case, I'm only gonna access Plex through a web browser. Um, or through my mobile phone. Um, these other ports are kind of used for like self um, auto discovery on your network. And um, it, when you're running Plex in a container in a VM, it's just not going to have access to your network, right? Which which could be a desirable thing for you, right? So, but but basically these other ports are just never really going to be used unless you host Plex, right? On unless you're running Plex on like a host computer, like as as if you're running it on Windows 10 or on a Linux computer, and you gave it um, host networking access, then this stuff would be useful. Um, otherwise, really, this is the only useful port. So, so our traffic rules for the tunnel are really just going to use that port, and we're you could pretty much follow along inside the tutorial for for making those rules. And um, I just wanted to cover that real quick before we kind of continue here. So, um, so let's go. This is a um, we're inside. We created a shell into our tunnel uh, container. So I'm just going to start adding my rules. All right, and my destination is going to be Plex. So because um, I gave a name to the container um, inside my compose file, um, I can, this is a pingable domain name within the Docker environment. And this is really useful because if the IP address of this container were changes, um, Docker will sort of manage the the naming, so it'll always kind of keep the name of the container mapped to the IP address. And so if it changes, um, this is just sort of a convenient way of not having to recreate these rules. 
And so my destination will be Plex and the HTTP port that we're going to forward to is going to be 32400. And just to show you if you ping Plex, um, that'll work uh, just fine. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create, um, I want to create the TCP endpoints um, for my Plex server. And so um, back when this tutorial was written, um, you would have to allocate the port first. Um, you no longer have to do that. You can actually just call um, tunnel TCP forward. And if you didn't specify a port, it will it will automatically request a port and then um, and use it for the rule that you're creating. And so what we'll do is we'll just run um, tunnel TCP forward and we'll skip the the port that um, because we don't have a port so uh, to specify so we'll just let th this tool will, this command will automatically allocate one okay and you'll see that it automatically allocated this uh, 22411 and then it added the rule and so now we have these two rules here and so um, we'll have to restart our container to kind of realize um, the changes and now we can begin um, now that we have access, so this is going to provide access to our Plex server. So I probably should have said that up front. What we're trying to do is create access to our Plex server, and now we're going to go about configuring it. So if I just restart this, you'll see that now it's forwarding over to, to my um, to my Plex server. Um, and so let me just kind of continue and log in. All right, and. Let's create a shell into our Plex container. Okay, so um, we're inside the Plex container now. And so we had created this mount here. So um, this, this slash music should be um, basically our network mounted media or music library, right? That's, that's mounted in read only mode. Um, and so, uh, and let's see here. And so we also had mounted these two directories from um, from the local host, right? From our Windows 10 computer. And here's a, so let's go take a look real quick and see. Um, we have a Plex directory and it created config and transcode. So that looks good. And if we go into slash music here and type ls, we could see all the music, right? And if I try to create a directory, it'll say you can't because it's read only. So everything is, is basically been set up um, as we had hoped here. And so uh, let's just reload our Plex. Okay. And so and so a lot of this is some of the default stuff that Plex has. Let's go in here and start work and start updating our server. Um, so this is an older server that I had set up. Um, I want to start creating a new server. Um, Let's just kind of go in here. And so what I want to do is I want to, um, we'll remove this server. Let's click on your media. Um, okay, so we're just gonna kind of navigate a little bit and see, um, we just have to kind of reveal our, uh, our server and add it to, um, to Plex here. All right, so, um, okay. So you can create a claim token. Um, and the way you create a claim token is um, you kind of add this environment variable to your config. So I'm going to put this here. And then I believe you can just go to plex.tv slash claim. All right, and so then you copy this and put that here. And then what we can do is, let's just kind of bring this back into the home. I'm going to delete this container. And then, and this is why Docker is so cool because you can pretty much make a change like that and then fix something and then you know, and then hopefully resolve like a small issue that you were having. So let me uh, just reload this page again. 
and so now um, with this claim token, it should it should automatically pick up uh, the media server that's running in this container, and then it can associate it to my demo account here. So okay, so it's done that. I'm going to just give this a new name. I'm going to call this my demo music server. Um, okay, allow me to access. Okay, so this is for remote access. Um, and since we're using a packet write tunnel to do this, we don't need this. And now I'm going to add some music and I'm going to browse um, for, for media. And so remember, we mounted stuff into slash music. And so now we'll just click on add library and we'll click on next. And now we're done. Okay, and so, um, you know, a little bit of a hiccup here trying to, um, you know, include this claim token. Um, uh, and so I'll, uh, I'll actually include a, um, uh, an update uh, in, the, in our tutorial uh, to include that. Um, so let's just click on music here. And so you can kind of see, this is my music. It's all being scanned now and it's all being loaded. And so it's gonna take a while to kind of go through my library to do that. But at this point, um, you know, we've, we've got our music library, it's loading up. And um, you know we associated this media server to our account using a claim code, and um, let's just kind of review real quick. And so we have, um, you know, we, we have a NAS that's hosting our media library. You know, we set that up with Docker, right, using this this block right here, um, and we created, or at least I created, um, a read-only user for my NAS. And then um, this this volume is called music, and so I referenced it here to map it inside the container into slash music. Um, also, uh, making it um, read-only, at least uh, with with regards to the container level as well. Um, and so, yeah, now now we've got our Plex server, and it's available, and um, it's going to slowly load up our music, and we've got it running in uh, Docker for Windows. And so. Um, you know, thanks for checking out this video. If you had any questions, uh, please just leave a comment. I know we kind of walked through a lot of different, um, different, different items and settings here, right? We we talked about, you know, um, can, we, we talked about setting up Plex. We talked about adding um, some new traffic rules, and um, you know, our compose file is becoming a bit more kind of advanced here. But you can kind of see, like, we were able to add um, a new Plex container and just continue to grow. Um, the set of servers that we're running here. And so, um, you know, we're going to kind of continue to build on this into future videos. And so if you have any suggestions, please leave those in the comments as well. And uh, thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.